This is part four of our sub-program series, and in this section, we're going to be looking at Delphi procedures and how we can create our own Delphi procedures. Now, in the previous videos, you would have noticed that we created our own functions. And just to remind ourselves, a function is like a mini program that takes in input via parameters, and it's like a machine that generates an answer and sends that answer back. But a procedure is slightly different. It doesn't send anything back. It's just called as it is. It doesn't, resend, it doesn't send back an answer. It just does something. It just does its job, whatever it needs to do. So when we looked at procedures in Delphi, we looked, for example, at a procedure like show message. Show message doesn't return anything. It just does what it needs to do. It, show, it takes that parameter, whatever, inside the brackets and displays that in a little box to the user. So we're going to create our own procedures and we will use procedures when we want to just do something that's not requiring a result to be returned back. Okay, so let's look at the steps involved in making procedures. You'll notice that the steps are pretty much the same as when we create a function. We start by declaring our procedure. Right at the top, we will declare our procedure, say what are the specifications, what parameters it needs, what's its name going to be. Then we will write the code for the procedure, and that will be what the job of that procedure. What, 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 must, what must it do? What is its uh, job? Um, once we've done that, the, the procedure won't run. They won't do anything because, it's as we've said before, it's like use, making a tool. We've created a tool. We now can we need to use that tool, and that would be the third step when we use the procedure. And because we've created that procedure, we can use it multiple times and we are minimizing our code. We are making it easier to error check or make changes to that procedure because we only have to change one place and not multiple places. So that's when we will use our procedure. So let's look at an example of how of this type of procedure called display heading. We're going to create a procedure called display heading. We often have a memo control. And in that memo control, we want to reset everything and get a nice little heading in it and that. And we find that we, in our programs, we're doing that all the time in a particular program. So to minimize our code, we're going to create a procedure that does it for us. So it minimizes our code, does all the setting, very simple. And procedures can take in parameters. And in this case, we're going to send through a string, which will be whatever the heading is going to be. And that's it. You'll notice that nothing gets returned. It just takes that string and it will do what it needs to do with the values that it's been given. So, how do we make our own procedure? How do we do the declaration part? That's the key. So, we're going to start off with the word procedure. That's how we start. So, you say the word procedure, you'll notice it'll turn blue because it's a predefined word in Delphi. Then we will give it a name, the procedure a name. Um, some sort of name that we can understand what that procedure is about. Um, preferably not a name that is currently used in Delphi for its own functions and procedures or own predefined uh, Delphi terms. Um, and then you will have parameters. Just like you would with a function, you will specify what information does this procedure need and specify what type of variables they are. And that's it. You'll notice a semicolon at the end. There's nothing else. There's no need to indicate what's being returned because the procedure is not returning anything. So if we take our display heading example, how would we declare it? Well, we would first use the word procedure. Then we would call it display heading. And in this case, we would give it a string as and we call it S title. And that's the value that's going into the procedure and for it to do what it needs to do. So let's go to Delphi and actually write the code for these procedures. Here we have our program. Um, you can see there's a memo and we're going to, what we want to do is create a procedure that's going to reset the memo every single time. And we're finding that we're doing the same thing all the time. We're clearing the memo and we put in a little heading in, putting maybe an, an, a line in. We're doing that all the time. So instead of writing that code all the time, we're going to create a procedure that will reset the memo for us every time and display the heading. So I'm going to go to my code, and over here we're going to write our procedure. Now the first thing I'm going to need to do is declare my procedure. Now I'm going to do that at the top here. Um, remember, we, we declared our functions over here. Remember, you can declare them privately or public. Um, you can pro declare them here as well. So I'm going to declare a procedure 
Yeah, you'll see that it goes blue. Now, before I do a procedure that takes in a parameter, I'm going to start off small and just do a simple procedure that um, takes in no parameters. So I'm going to call a procedure called display heading. And that's it. That's all that we need to do. So that would be our step one. So step one, as you know, is declare your procedure. Then once you've declared it, if you want to get to the actual code, we know there's a, a, a nice shortcut. It's Control plus Shift plus C. So we're going to press Control Shift C, and it takes me now down here to the code that we will write for this display heading. And in this display heading, there are things we want to do. What job does I, do I want to do? Well, I've got that memo, that memo one, and I'm going to clear it. And then I'm going to add a heading to it. So we're going to say lines.add. And I can say uh, what the details of program. Maybe that's the heading that we want to put in. And then underneath it, let's say we are going to add some little double lines. Just a couple like that. Okay, very simple little procedure. Instead of us having to do this all the time, we can then just call the procedure. So this over here is step two, where we write the code for our procedure. So we've created this procedure. We've created this tool of how this procedure works and what it's going to do. That doesn't mean it's going to do it because we haven't used it yet. So let's say with this program, when I click on display heading, I want to reset the memo. Let's pretend there's lots of stuff in the memo control. I'm actually going to put some random stuff in here. So it's already got the word, so let's just blah, blah, blah. You'll notice I'll just put some random stuff in the memo control. When I click on this button, I want to reset the memo and put a nice little heading in. So now that I've got this um, procedure, I'm in the button over here. So let's move this over there so that it doesn't get mixed up. So I've got my button click here, and I can just call my procedure like that. Just call it like it is. There's nothing being returned, so I don't have to say something equals display heading because this is a procedure. You just call it. And there's no parameters needed. So it will, when I call display heading, it will jump to this part of the code and then just run through that every single time. So every time I want to reset the heading and put in these type of specs, the, the, the heading and the lines, I just have to call display heading. Let's see if it works. There we go. If I click display heading, boom, there we go. So there we go. So that's our first custom procedure. So let's do another procedure. But this time we want to be able to customize the heading. In other words, we're going to have a very similar procedure to display heading, but we want to add a parameter. So let's go to our code. We're going to go up to the top here. Um, I'm just going to put this, because this was over here with my procedures. So let's say we're going to create another custom procedure. This time I'll call it procedure. Uh, I already have a display heading, so let's call this display heading 2 for this case. And this one is going to have a parameter. So just like we had in the PowerPoint, we're going to say there is a string that's going to come in as a parameter. We're going to give it information, because I want to specify what that heading's going to be. At the moment, this display heading, the first one we did, will always say details of program. Maybe I want to give it the title that I want it to display. So we're going to give it a parameter. We're going to give it information. We're going to give it input. So when we write the code for this procedure, where I go Control Shift C, we must believe that there's going to be something in its title. Just like we did with function, you just believe there's something there. And we are going to do pretty much the same thing. We are going to clear the memo. We are going to add a title to the memo control. But instead of typing a, a specific one that we used in the first display heading, we're now going to send this variable that has been provided as our title. So the user can send us whatever they want, and we can use that as our title. And then we can put in our nice little double lines underneath. Okay, so this is an example of a procedure 
that we've created that takes in a parameter. So it's very different to our display heading first one because it just did what it needed to do. There wasn't any information needed. This one needed information. It needs to know what type of title do you want to do. So if I come to this program, to this button, we are going to call display heading 2. Display heading 2, but when I press open bracket, you'll see it needs a parameter, a string. So what um, these are... The details so you can put whatever you want in as a parameter and then that string will then be put into s title when it runs the code for display heading 2 so whenever it sees s title it will see that particular string okay so let's run it and see what it looks like so when I click on display heading with a parameter you'll notice that it calls the display heading 2 with the customize heading. We can then click on display heading. This is the first one, which doesn't take a parameter, and it gives that different parameter. Maybe we want to be able to ask the user for a particular um, heading. So we want to say, what do you want? So S heading, I'll type string, and we can say S heading uh, with an input box. Heading, enter your heading and this way we can put a variable into our parameter and it will use whatever the user wants to type in so in this scenario I can say hello world now that will become the heading of my of my memory control because it sends hello world as a parameter to this, pro, this part of the program, this sub-program, this mini little machine, and it will use Hello World as S title. Let's do another example of a custom procedure. Let's create a procedure called load text file. Let's say we're going to create a procedure that will take data, we will specify the text file's name, and it will take that data and put it into our memo control for us every single time. So we can give it different types of um, text file name, so maybe it's data.txt or whatever. So the load text file procedure will run the the algorithm to take the data from the text file and put it into the memo control. It'll run that algorithm that we've learned in previous videos. Um, so it's, if we find we're doing that all over our program, how about we just create a procedure, a mini program that does it, so we just have to call this procedure once and it will run that code every single time to minimize our code. So let's see if we can do this procedure. So if we remember our first step, we're going to declare our procedure. We're going to call it procedure load text file. And then I'm going to give it a string variable, which is going to be the name of the text file. So I'm going to call this uh, text file name. I'm going to give it quite a descriptive uh, variable name so that when the user calls the load text file, procedure that will pop up so it will give its information to the user so they can see what type of variable it needs but also giving a, a descriptive name gives a lot more information to the user so text file name so there is my procedure I'm going to go control shift C and here we at the code now we can run through our code like we normally do we know our, our text file variable all the different steps so we can create first of all we can create variables here as well so I'm creating F of type, um, well, type text file, so that's my text file variable, and we need S line, which is of type string. I'm not going to do error checking, you could do that here if you wanted to, but I'm just going to go assign file, we're going to assign a text file variable to what the name of the text file is, and we're going to believe that that string has S text file name, we believe that that string has the name of a text file in it. You could probably do some error checking here. Check that there's a that there's a valid text file name that it exists. Um, but we're going to just believe that they have typed in correctly. So there, you believe that there's a value in there, and we're going to use whatever value they've given us to assign it to F. Then we're going to reset F, which means reset the text file. And while we are not at the end of our text file. Again, we are going to read line from F into S line and then 
at the end we will close our text file variable okay if you're not sure about this algorithm you can go to our text file videos and you can see all about how to read data from a text file so we will get each individual line from the text file and what do we want to do with it well we want to place it in our memo control so our memo one the lines dot add we're going to add s line and then it'll move to the next line and add it and so on we'll go through the text file and just add it so let's say we're doing this all the time so to save us some code we just create this procedure so then every time i want to load a text file into the memo one i can just call this procedure and i can give it different text file names whenever i call it and it will load it the only limitation of this procedure is that it will only load the text file into memo one if i've got multiple memos then i either would need to create different load text file procedures one for each type of memo or a little tricky thing that you can do is you could make a memo a t memo is one of the parameters but that's for another example we don't need to worry about that at the moment okay so we have created our tool our load text file so now we're going to go to this button over here and what i want to do here is before i display load the text file i'm going to display a heading too because we've got that procedure available to us i'm going to say um, data from text file so we are using our second procedure that we've created do you see how we've minimized our code we don't need to write all this again and now i'm going to say load text file and it wants a text file name now in my folder i've created a data.txt so i'm going to give it the string data.txt and it should run the display heading procedure and once it's done it will then run the load text file procedure let's see if it works boom data from text file and there's all the data well name is along it probably is a data file full of superior names and there we go it is so there's our superior names they're all being listed from the text file now if i called that procedure and created a different text file called details.txt i could just say load text file and in brackets a details.txt and it will load those details from that text file into the, the memo control so are you seeing how we've minimized our code we don't have to repeatedly write this every single time we've created these little um little programs sub programs that do a specific job they don't return anything they just do a particular type of job and that's how we make our custom procedures for the other videos in this video series as well as other videos on delphi you can go to our youtube channel you can subscribe um, tell us what videos you like uh, follow us on facebook and twitter and and find out whenever we post new videos and really just give us feedback we'd love to hear from you and remember don't do it the long way do it the mr long way